This is a nice large piece of beautiful amethyst that I picked up while I was on a gem hunting trip to the mining region of Brazil called Minas Gerais more than a decade ago. The beautiful state known for colonial era towns, cobblestone roads, dating back to the 18th century gold rush. There's ornate mansions, baroque churches, and many gem mines. The name Minas Gerais roughly translates to general mines because the state was rich in gold, gem, and even diamond mines. There used to be an annual gem trading event or gem show at the very small town Teflio Otoni. It was really fun to attend. A little hard to get to, but a lot of fun. I believe the annual event still occurs, and if anyone knows for sure, please let us know the details in the comments. For our piece of amethyst, I'm going to use two-part epoxy, JB Weld, to put it onto the dot. So to do that, I have need a something to mix it on. I use an old business card and something to mix it with. I use a bamboo skewer. So I take the uh, piece of amethyst and I put it in a piece on a, to a piece of putty because the bottom part's not flat. That helps th so that I can make push the dop on the top and hold it flat. So, so then I'm gonna use a larger dop. I try to get one about the same width as my stone. And the reason is I'm gonna use that to center the stone. So first I'll use the bigger dop. Then when I get it centered, I'll slide on the smaller dop that I'm going to use for cutting. Try to get the stone centered in the dot. And that's where the putty lets me maneuver the stone around. It's not holding it fast, it's just helping. That way a little bit about as centered as I can get it, about where I want it. So I push down to push the stone onto the putty, adjust the putty a little bit, because that'll kind of hold the stone a tiny bit, and then just remove the, uh, the larger dot, replace it with the smaller dot, push the dot on, and Kind of make sure it didn't move, it's still centered and flat where you want it. And now I'll use uh, the two-part epoxy, so I push the dot back up with it a little bit tight so that it doesn't fall back down. Okay, so now we're ready for the epoxy. So again, uh, two-part epoxy uh, you can use super glue, you can use two-part epoxy, you can use wax, and a lot of very, very talented faceters use wax on the dop. It's uh, easier in some cases because wax is, doesn't take much heat to remove it, but it takes a little bit technique to use wax, and I'm just not good at it, so I use two-part epoxy. So this is a rather large stone, so I'm going to put a good amount, and I'm going to replace this two-part epoxy anyway after a year, and I won't use it all before the year, so it's not a big deal to have waste. And the reason I replace it is uh, after about a year, the you know, it, it eventually goes bad, and you when it's fresh, the hardener which I just put on, is the same color as the resin, but now, after a few months, the hardener changes color. So, after a year, I get rid of my two-part epoxy. And I'll probably switch to a DEFCON, DEFCON uh, two-part epoxy. A lot of people on, a lot of the other cutters say it's better, I haven't had no problem with JB Weld. It's been great for me. It's readily available. You can pick it up at uh, Home Depot. It's not a big deal. But probably try the DevCom since everybody else says it's super good. We'll try it. Okay, so once you mix the two part epoxy, you want to put it on the on the dot and 
the stone. Then you push the stone down onto the top. Tighten up your transfer jig and you're going to have to maneuver it so that the epoxy does not you know, run down the side of the stone or uh, run too far up the dop where it's going to cause problems. So I'm just going to maneuver it so that you know I want to keep the uh, epoxy probably about there. And then I just want it on the stone kind of going up the dop and I don't want it to come down the stone. It's not, it's not a big deal. Although when I, if I'm cutting and I'm cutting into epoxy, I always worry that it may, you know, lose its, uh, lose the uh, grip. So I try not to, but the other thing is the epoxy gets into the, the, the laps and it, it gums them up and you have to clean them off. Not a big deal, uh, cleaning with acetone, but, but I, rather not deal with acetone if I didn't have to it's a it's pretty nasty stuff if you do use it to clean things make sure you're in a well ventilated area guys follow the instructions acetone is really strong so all right so I'll put this aside and uh, let it set overnight I'll work on another stone and be ready to cut this one tomorrow I found a very interesting design by the late Jeff Graham that I think will work well for this piece of amethyst. The design is called Angelfish, and when I'm finished, my gemstone should look something like this from the top and the side. Jeff provided the following information on cutting this design. I've covered what all this information means in a previous two-part video, so check out those videos if you have any questions about using this design or uh, what these instructions mean. Jeff always did a great job, not only with his designs, but with explaining and talking about his designs that I really appreciated. For example, with Angelfish, Jeff shared his view that this is an interesting design that works well in a larger stone, and that he particularly liked this design for Bolivian Amethyst. Unfortunately, I cannot show you Jeff's cutting instructions for Angelfish. For the instructions, you'll have to obtain a copy of the book that Jeff published this design in. The book is called Additional Designs Number 8, and all of Jeff's books are available from Gene Rodolfi over at The Rock Peddler. If there are any other sources that anyone is aware of for Jeff's books, please let us know in the comments. Okay, I just finished going over the first, I guess, pre-polishing or pre-forming of our amethyst into the angelfish design with a 360 topper lap. I just did the first tier, the first row on the pavilion and the first, and of course the one row on the girdle. I didn't do any further on the pavilion with the uh, 360, there's no need. It's kind of an intricate design which means that it's going to cut fast so it's best to save those those facets to where I get to maybe the 1200 or maybe even the 3000. I probably won't do any more tiers on the pavilion other than this first tier with the 600 topper which is the next lap that I'm going to use just because you know, I'll overcut because the, the, the design is so, so intricate. So that's where we are. Next is the 600 grit topper lap. Okay I finished polishing the amethyst or angelfish design on the pavilion or the bottom half of the stone. So uh, next I'll transfer the stone to the crown and what I'm going to do is I've already marked how much I need, uh, how much space I need for the top half of the stone or the crown and it's right, right here is what I need. You know, I need that much to finish the crown without any problem. So I'm going to, after I do the transfer, I'm going to trim with my trim saw and cut this stone here, which will give me uh, all of this as a trim piece, another piece of rough that I can use. I could just use my laps and grind this all down to amethyst dust but it seems like there's a lot left and instead of wasting it, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it. So the way I determine the uh, 
amount that I need, of course, is from our instructions on our, our design. You take, what you're looking for is the crown to width ratio, the C to W. And Jeff Graham gives that to us as uh, the C to W is 0 0.189. So you measure the width of the stone and you multiply that by 0.189. And in our case, that gives us 2.66 millimeters. And then you add what your girdle is going to be. And a girdle is normally between 0.3 and 0.5. Again, the girdle is about the width, the width of your fingernail. So with the girdle included, it's about 2.96, round up to about three millimeters, give me extra space in case I goop something up. So then you use your, your protractor, your, your, your measure, and I use optical, I mean, eye gauging. I use eye gauging, it's a really good one for me company's really good, really worked with you. And you just set it for three millimeters or really close to three millimeters. And then the opening, that's how much space you need for your crown. So we'll transfer our stone and uh, start working on the upper half of our amethyst. Okay, we've marked the uh, our amethyst right there where where it shows where we need this much well a little less than this much for the crown of the stone we're cutting so I could just you know remove remove the top top and start working on the crown and just grind everything down and leave a girdle between the bottom half of the stone, which is right here, and, and, and this will be the crown, and everything else will just grind off. But instead of doing that, why not just use my trim saw, cut this in half, and that gives us this much amethyst. It's kind of a, it's not gonna be that big of a stone, but who knows, I mean, it's still a piece of amethyst already dopped up, ready to go. And we'll use that as a free piece and then uh, put this half in, back in the altar tech and cut the crown. I just have to make sure I leave enough space based on the instructions, which gave us the crown to width ratio of uh, 0.189. Okay, this is my trim saw. It's uh, from Ameritool. There's the information. And so the way you work it is move the cover and this reservoir uh, down here. You fill that with water just so it touches the bottom of the blade. That's all it needs to do is come in contact with the bottom part of the blade and that'll make sure it keeps the blade cool as it's cutting through our stone. Place the cover. This tool I run at full speed. It's meant to run at full speed. The, the saw blade that I use is a sintered blade which means there's diamonds uh, throughout the the top part of it. So when the first row of diamonds is ground down, another row is revealed underneath. This is to keep the water from splashing. This is an optional part that you can hold the stone with and I'll set the stone up and be right back. Okay, I think that's the best angle I can get you to show as I cut through the uh, uh, piece of amethyst. I put the uh, splash guard down so water doesn't go everywhere and uh, always wear eye protection when you're working with your trim saw so the idea is to go slow full speed of the saw and keep your fingers out of the way
Okay, that's uh, the extra piece amethyst that we now have. Okay, I needed about three millimeters above the girdle. Um, I just measured it, it's about 5.2 millimeters above the girdle. I left plenty of room to err on the side of the caution. I didn't want to make a mistake and end up with not enough space to cut the upper half or crown of our stone. We have more than enough space. So again, I could have just ground all this amethyst into dust. It's not going to be a gigantic trim piece freebie stone. It's uh, 3.2 millimeters thick and 12, almost 13 millimeters wide. But I do know of a design that uh, that might work. So now we'll finish cutting our angelfish. Here's a potential preview for a future video. That trim piece will actually work just fine for a design that I've always wanted to cut called sailboat, ring of fire, and the design was designed by uh, Jay Hammer. This design and the cutting instructions are available for all cutters at facetdiagrams.org. Tell me what you think. Stay tuned for a future sailboat video, unless I really mess up cutting my trim piece. So wish me luck. Finish preforming our Amethyst Angelfish with a 360 grit uh, diamond topper. And now I'll switch to the 600 grit and go over everything and move the uh, closer to the where I want the girdle to be. I just need to work the first row of facets because the other rows on the crown, the other tiers, are very uh, intricate and I don't need I don't need to touch those with the 600, 360 or the 600 or probably even the 1200. 1200 I'll probably use, I'll go through the four uh, rows, but then there's four other rows, I'll probably wait to the 3000 to even touch those. So the 600 grit uh, lap is next. Okay, I finished polishing our angelfish amethyst, except for the table. So now I'll set it up and uh, cut and polish the table of our angelfish. Finished polishing the table on our angelfish, so now I'll put it in uh, some acetone and uh, soak the uh, adhesive off and then we'll weigh it and measure it and send it off to Bopi. Overall, I would say I really enjoyed cutting and polishing angelfish. It was a lot of fun and as I continued to gain experience on my trim saw, I even got a freebie trim piece to try out the sailboat design on in a future video. Cool. I do not see Angelfish as a difficult design, but because it has some intricate and small facets, I would not recommend this for a brand new cutter, not, at least not one of their first, oh, I'd say five or six stones. After that, no problem. Uh, just remember not to use your rougher laps on the smaller facets or you will overcut them. You can wait until the pre-polish phase or maybe even the polish phase to cut in these intricate facets. Enjoy cutting angelfish. Happy fasting, everyone.